Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. So we're on our way to a new Tesla charger and it's a new uh, V4, at least V4 dispenser charger um, that recently opened in Jordan Valley, Oregon. Um, so it's technically not a full V4 yet. Tesla is still working on that. Um, so there's no V4 cabinets, you know, the big chargers that are behind the scenes. That's not out yet, um, but the V4 dispensers are out. And so this is kind of a V3.5 installation. Um, so it'll be my first experience seeing that. Um, we're going to try it with my Mustang Mach-E here with the Tesla Nax to CCS adapter. Um, so I'm excited to try that out. Um, so the location of this charger is a really big deal. So last fall, um, I did a Boise to Reno uh, road trip in the Mach-E and there's not a lot of charging between the Boise area and the Winnemucca area. Right over the Nevada border, there's a, a little, it's not even a town, it's just like a point on the map called McDermott. There's a new Tesla charger there that supports the adapter. Um, and so we use that, but it was really close in my standard range all-wheel drive Mach-E. Um, we left the Boise area and then we actually had to charge up in Nampa, which is only like 20 miles uh, west. Um, and we had to get close to 100% and then kind of hypermile it all the way to McDermott because there's no charging between there until now. So I was getting to McDermott in the single digits, not running climate. And uh, yeah, it's pretty dicey going through there. Like the Maki -E could not make that trip in the winter time. Um, if you wanted to maintain full speed, um, you know, go the full speed limit. Uh, th just the standard range couldn't do it. Um, I saw a lot of posts online of Tesla owners that's like, oh, I can barely make it to McDermott. I'm going to get there with 1%, 2%, um, you know, if they didn't charge, if they charged in Boise and then didn't charge until they got there. There's 2,000 feet of elevation gain. So anyway, this new Jordan Valley charger is going to be a really big deal, um, and it is a big deal, and I'm excited that it's open now. Uh, I have not seen any posts on the Tesla X account about it yet. Um, I suspect it'll be on there any day but it is live on Tesla's website and in the Tesla app, which I'll need to activate the charger. Um, or <clears throat> you should be able to activate it with plug-in charge, so we'll, tr um, so we'll try that as well. If you're doing any kind of trips between the Boise area and down to like Winnemucca, if you're going down towards Reno, um, it's gonna make those, tr and obviously coming the other direction too, it's gonna make that just a lot easier you're not going to need to do these 100% charges and hypermile it to make it. It's still pretty nerve-wracking because there's literally nothing around there. There's an RV park in the Jordan Valley area, um, and I think you can pay, I think it was $20, and you can plug into a NEMA 1450 for like three hours or something. And it's like, who, <laughs> who wants to do that unless obviously you need to? So we're going to be getting there after dark. I was hoping to show it in the daytime, but... I think this will end up being fine because it's kind of in the middle of nowhere so I'd actually kind of like to know how uh, creepy or not creepy it is before I'm going through there with like my family or something and uh, you know just kind of kind of check it out here so um, yeah I'm hoping to do another you know road trip on that route here at some point maybe this summer um, so hopefully maybe on that trip you'll get to see this same site in the daytime. I'm leaving the Boise area and the Mach-E here. Um, I left my house at about 99% and kind of clicked to 100 after we left. And the car I was thinking we'll get there with about 56%. Um, so I, that'll be good in case we can't charge for some reason. I should have enough juice to make it home. So, um, so yeah, and I'm not going to hyper mile at this time. I'm just going to do normal speeds. Um, we do have good weather right now. Um, I'm running a little bit AC, but it's 79 degrees outside Fahrenheit. Um, so not, not going to really need to do any heat. The car is warm. So also, you know, I'm excited to check this out because it's my first experience with any of the V4 equipment. Like I mentioned, it's a V3 cabinet with a V4 dispenser. Um, but uh, I forget how recently, maybe six months, a couple months ago, uh, Tesla did push an update that these V4 dispensers, the V3.5 install basically, they can do up to 325 kilowatts, where previously 
everything, you know, the, the max the V3 stations could do was 250 kilowatts. But it's right now it's only for the Cybertruck. So obviously my Mach-E, uh, <laughs> it uh, charges way slower than that. The peak on this, because it's the standard range NCM battery, it can only do 115 kilowatts. So we're not going to be maxing this thing out by any means. Just wanted to mention that because it's pretty interesting. And really, why should you care about V4? I mean, and you don't have a Cybertruck? Well, um, once the actual V4 cabinets come out, they're going to support a higher voltage. They're going to support up to 1,000 volts, which for all the 800-volt architecture cars, that's a really big deal. Because right now, all of those 800-volt cars can't charge very quickly at the superchargers. They end up charging at like roughly half or even worse than half their speed um, because the supercharger can't go to that high of a voltage. Um, the superchargers are designed as like a 400 volt system at I think roughly 600 amps to get 250 kilowatts. Um, and so to do the 325 kilowatts on these V3.5 installs, they're upping the current for the Cybertruck. So they're upping the current up to like 800, 850 amps, um, which is, that's a lot of amps. Um, so that's how they're doing that. Uh, but the, the Cybertruck is still having to charge in that 400 volt range because the cabinet can't do the higher voltage yet. Um, so once the higher voltage cabinet is there, um, then all these 800 volt cars, your Lucid Air, um, your Hyundai Ioniq 5, um, Hummer EV, Silverado EV, and probably many more coming soon, and the Cybertruck, all of those cars then will double their voltage. So at the same amperage, you're going to, you know, double your charging speed with double the voltage. Um, so, you know, that's how like the Ionic 5, for example, is charging at over 200 kilowatts, uh, but it might only be pulling 300 amps um, because the voltage is twice as high. My understanding is the, the adapters that um, are getting mailed out to a lot of, uh, from a lot of automakers, the Electron adapters, the Tesla adapters, um, they're rated for a thousand volts. Um, I think they might be limited to a 500 amps and then some of the adapters are even limited to 350 amps. So, um, you know, on the higher voltage cars, that's fine. The lower voltage cars, you need more amperage. Um, but. You know, then the, for example, then an Ionic 5 can roll up with the 800 volts um, at 300 amps and then get its, you know, 200 some kilowatts on the Tesla supercharger. But it, it needs that 1000 volt capable um, supercharger cabinet. And right now it doesn't have that yet. Um, so yeah, the sun is setting here. Um, we've got about an hour to go to the charger. So I think at this point, um, I will see you guys at the charger. All right, well, we are about two miles out from the charger here in Jordan Valley. So, um, yeah, we've had good efficiency. Um, you know, it's, it's mostly uphill. You know, it's about 2,000 feet of elevation gain. Um, you know, since we left the Boise area, um, we've gone about 80 miles, and our average efficiency here is about three miles per kilowatt hour. But that was with the car was basically preconditioned. It was all warmed up, good temperatures. I've been going about 65 to 70. The speed limits vary through here a couple of times. And then uh, right here, the speed limit's 70. I'm actually going 60 because I'm there's a truck up here. Um, there's been a couple of times where it's just super dark and I've seen a few deer or something cross the road. So I've just slowed down a little bit. Um, but I haven't slowed down in terms of like trying to save my battery or anything. Um, so we're at 56% right now. Um, okay, here it is. I see it. Okay, they got like one street light over here. So yeah, it's just right, right here. Okay, turning in here. So yeah, there are there are eight stations. So they've got two cabinets here, two V3 cabinets. Um, let's see. I think we'll 
we'll pull in first and I'll show you around the station. So yeah, this is cool to see it all lit up here. There's even a garbage can here, a couple garbage cans. Um, all right, let's check it out. So we're here. Um, we're going to plug in here. Um, yeah, so the cable kind of hangs down there out of the way. Um, so you almost don't even see it until you're looking for it. Um, so it looks pretty nice. Obviously, I think the V2 and V3 style of the cabinets look nicer, but these cabinets have better thermals um, for, you know, that's how they're doing the 325 kilowatts. Um, and then eventually these should be doing the 500 kilowatts on certain vehicles. So they're going to need all that cooling capability. So that's, that's why they look so much different and to support the longer cable management. Um, I think they did a nice job and that should alleviate a lot of problems. So a nice long cable here. Um, I could definitely move the car up a little bit further, but looks like it should reach no problem. Got the adapter on there and we're in. Now I'm on Verizon and I don't have any cell service here, which might be an issue. So I'm hoping plug in charge is going to work and it looks like it is. The car is getting juice here. And I just heard this start charging over here. So yeah, fans ramping up. Now, some other videos I had seen, like the early units, there was a, a screen right here, but it doesn't look like there is one on these. So I don't know if they're going to have screens on other units or not, but plug and charge did work. Um, I'll check and see if there's Wi-Fi around because you kind of need a way to activate the charger if you don't have plug and charge. Um, so that's kind of the only maybe dicey situation here. I don't know if Tesla has a way to provide some Wi-Fi here or something. Um, and then the other thing is because the Mach-E doesn't show the charging speed inside the car, um, I have no idea how fast I'm charging because I can't open the Ford app because there's no connection. Um, I'll, I'll see if it shows it over Bluetooth, but probably not. Um, so I'll have to use the car scanner app and see how fast we're charging. So like I mentioned, um, I don't have any cell service here. You can see it's just SOS only. Um, so we're going to open the Ford Pass app and just see. Um, now this is when I left home earlier. So that's not accurate and it's probably not going to be able to load anything here. Yeah, so I have, I have access to my Bluetooth controls but I can't see charging speed over that. So let's open car scanner. Okay, sweet. So we're doing, looks like 70 kilowatts into the battery, um, which is perfectly fine. We're at 62%. Um, so I think that's pretty typical. So yeah, we're at 64%. It's saying we would get to 80% in 10 minutes from now, uh, doing 70 kilowatts. Um, so yeah, that seems about right. I didn't do any preconditioning the battery should have been at an okay temperature um, and you know I'm not really going for fast speeds or anything here I'm at a higher state of charge I'm just making sure everything works here I'm really glad plug-in charge work um, let's see if there's any Wi-Fi around here Tesla Wi-Fi Mercury I don't I don't know what that is that must be I don't know maybe some something to configure their setup here um, now I think the host site kind of coffee shop thing here skinner's rock house coffee um so people said um go grab an ice cream while you're charging i can't really tell if they're open right now i don't think so um so i might i might walk over there just a little bit just to see if we if we can pick up any wi-fi oh yeah okay skinner's rock house um but i need a password so yeah, I think they are the host site as far as I can tell, um, based on the plug share info here. I had this pulled up, but it's it went away. So yeah, here's the site here, um, right next to the road. Obviously it's nighttime here, but um, I think the Skinner's Coffee is just right over here. I think this might be somebody's house on the left. I can't really tell. There's somebody walking around over there. But yeah, I don't think the Skinner's Coffee is open right now um, but yeah you just come right in through here um, super nice install 
they've got kind of this metal fence around it. Um, one really bright street light with two bulbs. So if one of those goes out, there'll still be at least one on here. A couple trash cans. Um, if you're coming through here with a trailer, there's no like pull throughs, I guess, but you could probably come down here on the end. And with how long these cables are, um, you should be able to charge okay. Um, let me show you the charger a little bit up closer. Um, so here's the post numbers down here, 2A. We heard some fans kick on when we started it. We've got a little QR code there, but like I mentioned, no, no internet connection here, um, at least for on Verizon. Specs on the cable and stuff is up in there, uh, but uh, definitely a heavier cable than the V3 superchargers. People have been equating it to like the V2 supercharger uh, kind of thickness, but it's still pretty flexible. Um, worked with my adapter, no problem. Um, and plenty of length. You can see I've got plenty of room in front of the car. I'm not sure what the technical proper etiquette is here because this, this could reach a Tesla on the other side. Um, you know, typically a Tesla would back in here and then grab the cable from that one. Um, but, you know, there's no extra space down there. So I think they're designing you pull directly in front or back directly into behind whichever one you're going to use. At least that's my thinking. Um, but yeah, tons of room here. No problems with the cable. Um, and then, like I was mentioning earlier, those are the V3 cabinets um, and then V4 dispenser. So um, yeah, we can't do the 800 volt architecture stuff here yet. Um, I don't know if these V4 dispensers they will eventually come change the cabinets out at some point i don't i don't know what their plan is there but um still uh beats charging at the rv park down the street by a lot all right well i think that about does it for this video i'm going to get back on the road and head out um, but really happy this worked um, let me know if you have any questions about the site i'll try and get back here hopefully sometime this summer and get some shots in the daytime um, and also see if the cell service uh, see what the uh, Skinner situation is. Can we get some Wi-Fi over there? Um, get some ice cream maybe. Um, and uh, yeah, I think right now, if you wanted to stop somewhere, you probably would just go to this Sinclair down here. Uh, you could walk, there's a, there's a sidewalk back here. So anyway, uh, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.